Welcome back to the White House. Embracing artificial intelligence, the Trump administration is set to host executives from the tech sector, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Intel, and 34 other major U.S. companies for a summit on artificial intelligence. That happens later this week. Joining us right now is the co-founder and CEO of Rome, Alex Turkeltab. Alex, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you. Thank you so much for having me what early you, in the morning. What do you make of this outreach from the White House? Tell us how you see this AI summit taking hold. Yep, so I think the, the logic is very, very simple. The White House is panicked about the fact that China is investing massive amounts of resources in AI. I think Xi Jinping has been very clear by 2030, China should be the leader in artificial intelligence. And so the whole idea is what can we do to scramble to do something about it? I think what the White House, quite frankly, seems to be missing that the core things we should be doing are very simple. Fund a lot more basic research at the university level and change regulations in a number of industries to allow a lot more data sharing, a lot more data analytics, and a lot more of the artificial intelligence platforms like the company I started, Rome, to be able to use the data productively to change the way different industries function. Well, that's the issue, right? Because China invests in American companies and then it transfers their technology to Chinese companies. I mean, your, your company, Rome Analytics, hosting an event today at Stanford called Leaders in Global Health and Technology, which focuses on the transformation of healthcare using AI. I want to hear about that, but isn't part of the issue in terms of China taking that technology and transferring it to Chinese companies? Yeah, to be honest, the issue is not so much the fact that the Chinese are trying to steal our IP. What they're doing in artificial intelligence is they're trying to leverage the assets they already have, which is a massive population, almost no privacy laws with the data, and these massive technology companies that they've built up partially with government support by blocking our companies from coming in there. I think the things we need to worry about is not so much whether they're going to steal our technology, but number one is are we investing in the core research, as I mentioned before? Number two, are we bringing the best brains to our universities? We still have by far the best universities in the world focused on technology and artificial intelligence. We have a lot of people coming in from all over the world and we force them to leave. And number three, what are we doing to make innovation possible? So you mentioned, Maria, the Light Forum we're hosting today. The whole idea of the Light Forum is how is artificial intelligence transforming the business of healthcare? And in healthcare, the industry I work in, the regulatory environment makes it very difficult to work with some of the most interesting data. So if our government wants to encourage that type of innovation, encourage startups, what it needs to do is say, how can we make sure that the data that's available can be used to help patients and encourage technology companies to get into the space? Yeah, it's about now, patients, John. Specific... Uh, 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 Alice, yep. Ch China is an autocratic state. Silicon Valley is a hotbed of capitalism and the free flow of ideas. Can we really expect an autocratic estate where so much is happening from the top down to become a world leader in artificial intelligence? Or does the free market win out in, 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 in this, this race to dominate this emerging technology? So that's a, that's a great question. I think there's two parts to artificial intelligence that need to be separated. The first part is, in order to have artificial intelligence work at scale, you need massive amounts of data. And China has a core advantage because it has a much bigger population and it's collecting data in very consistent and interesting ways. With respect to the technology can be used then on top of that, I believe that our country is going to be far more creative in terms of developing new and innovative applications. But one has to say that the Chinese do have access to those basic inputs that are necessary. And again, not to keep right. going back to healthcare, but if you look at, at healthcare in this country, when we look at things like oncology, you'd have population data sets in America of a few tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. I've met companies in China that'll put together lists of three, four, five, ten million 10 million patients with a particular disease. And so you don't need very sophisticated algorithms when you're working with data sets that are that large. Mm. But having but said they're, that, they're using... you're absolutely right that we will generate more and more interesting companies than they will so long as we continue funding the research. Sure, sure. They're using their, their data to, to monitor and intimidate their own population. I mean, there's only so much you can, you can do with that. You know, it, here in the U.S., we're looking to come up with creative solutions for healthcare. Do we really think that they're going to be able to leverage this control that they have in this autocratic state to do more than controlling the population? 
Well, I think that, that remains to be seen. There's a number of creative and interesting startups. I know in my space, I've met a lot of startups in China that are doing very interesting things in different disease areas. Clearly, the government there has a policy or an intention of supporting its technology giants in part because it can then collect the data. But I think if we just talk about what they're doing and we've already lost, the key issue is how can we leverage the advantages that we have? Again, the conversation we're going to have at the Light Forum is all about we have really interesting technology that can take a lot of the data that's out there about right. patients, unstructured data in health records and elsewhere, put it together and have meaningful change mm. for how patients reach better outcomes, yeah. how we pay for health care. Oh, it's incredible. We don't need to I have mean, the a marriage between technology and health care has been, you know, really um, important and life-saving. We know that. that and, and, and you're working on just that. Did you have a question real quick? I actually had a national security question when it comes to um, artificial intelligence and what we're talking about China. China in terms of collecting data, because that's been one of the big concerns from a national security perspective is Chinese technology coming to the U.S. that grabs and collects a lot of data and on our population and other forms. Uh, what do you think needs to be done to empower U.S. companies to be able to compete with some of the technology that we're seeing in the United States from China that collects that type of data? Well, I think we need to be very smart about when we collaborate with any foreign company. And clearly, when you buy certain technology from foreign companies, whether it's from China or Russia or elsewhere, I think there was a big scandal a couple of months ago with Kaspersky Labs, mm -hmm. which had a bunch of its software installed in various American installations. Obviously, Kaspersky is a Russian company. You have to be aware of the fact that they could be collecting data and could be collaborating with their governments. But again, the challenges to our infrastructure, and I want to emphasize this point, is we don't need to have an inferiority complex where we believe that they're ahead and we need to furiously catch up. What we need to understand is we have the best assets in the world. We have Silicon Valley and a number of other interesting centers, big companies that are doing innovative things, small companies that are doing innovative things, and we still attract the world's best engineers to places like Stanford, where we'll be later today. So the idea is not so much what they're doing, but how do we keep one step ahead, two steps ahead, yeah. by investing in what I, we should be doing I, in various I industries. I understand totally, and If I may Alex, make one other point I, is that yeah. we should think about the industries that are important to our future and what AI can do for them. Well, Healthcare that, and education why, would be my top two, yeah, because I, they're I, really expensive, we have very mediocre outcomes, and we have the capability to deploy very sophisticated technology very quickly because we still have the best companies in the world right here in California and right here in Silicon Valley. Alex, thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. Alex Turkletow, Thank you very us much there. for having me. Have All a right. wonderful morning. We will see you soon.